What is up guys, Winter Kills here and welcome back to a brand new uh, test hand video for uh, Burning Abyss post Dart Neo Storm. This is still uh, the build, uh, similar to the build that I posted in that most recent deck profile. Uh, if you haven't checked that out yet, I highly recommend doing it. It should be up in the top right corner of the screen. If you want to see it, also be annotated at the end in the last 20 seconds of the video, so then you can click on the screen as well. Take you to that profile, and I got a ton of feedback on that profile. More feedback than I was expecting, uh, to be honest, and a lot of it, um, uh, a lot of it, you know, it was uh, intense. A lot, a lot of people had a lot of things to say about the profile, which is, uh, I guess, to be understood. Uh, since it was a bit unorthodox, I guess, from a lot of other BA profiles and how a lot of probably other people would play their BA deck uh, in the future. Um, I just wanted to play mine uh, as close to Dante Turbo, big BA, so to speak, uh, as possible. Didn't want to play the dangers because of budget reasons and just the overall feeling and knowing that they aren't needed for this deck to operate. Um, and uh, the Phantom Knight engine because I feel like that rank up spell will get banned, uh, at least I hope it does, because I think that would just be really healthy for the game. Um, and uh, yeah, without further ado, we're going to do some test hands here though, and also guys, don't forget to check out Imperium Duelist for some amazing effect sleeves like the ones I'm here rocking on these, uh, uh, this Burning Abyss deck and the main deck, and then on the extra deck, these Diamond effect sleeves. So we've got the Galaxy sleeves and the Diamond sleeves, and also this Dragon Scale playmat if you want to pick anything up from Imperium Duelist, you can do that down in the description below and use that code if you want to save 10% off. So let's go ahead and get into our first test hand and uh, let's see what we can pull off. Alright, so shuffled up real fast. Let's go ahead and see what our first hand will be like. And let's see, Psychic Tracker, Rhino Warrior, uh, Skarm, and Block Dragon. So I'm trying out, I actually forgot this was in here. I'm actually trying this out in here. Um, mainly because it comes up a lot of times where uh, excess earth monsters, usually duplicates of Rhino Warrior, Psychic Monsters, and Mathematician and Gallus, uh, prevent your um, your uh, Hydralander from going off. So this is one of those cards that can clear your graveyard of some duplicates and uh, fix your hand, which is really nice. Um, and I didn't expect to draw it in the first hand, but that's, that's okay. Uh, this is experimental. I don't know if I'll play it going forward, just something I wanted to try. Um, I'm also playing two Hydralander in this build, again, uh, because I wanted to experiment with it, and I think it's been working okay thus far. So, we'll start off by normal summoning the Rhino Warrior, and special summoning the Psychic Tracker, and not waste any time, and go into our first Link Monster, which is going to be Cherubini, Black Angel, the Burning Abyss. Use Phoenix Rhino Warrior here to send the Graph, and Graph, of course, will special summon the Seer, like that. And now we will use Cherubini to discard, or well, send a card, uh, and that is going to be a copy of, uh, could either be Sea Archiver, which is a uh, new tech card that I'm trying out uh, in here, because I have, again, made a few changes uh, to the build since the last profile. Um, and then I cut, uh, I think I cut the Phantom Knight engine down quite a bit. I'm only playing two boots and a cloak now with two fog blade instead of the, you know, one gloves, two uh, cloak three boots cut that down a bit thanks to some help from uh, people watching the stream uh, and things of that nature so definitely made a few changes so now that we sent the edge of sabers we'll use uh, cherubini to turn this back to the top of our deck and uh, we'll go right into our first adanti we'll detach the seer and we will mill three uh, milling of course the skarm a cloak and a boots that's pretty nice actually um, so now that we've uh, milled Seer, we'll use Seer's effect here to uh, summon this graph. We can put that right there. And uh, now we could use the uh, boots here, banish the boots. So I'll put this over here. Banish boots to add a copy of Fogblade. If I can find it, yep, there's a copy of Fogblade. And uh, yeah, with that being said, that pretty much does it for this turn. Um, if we would have been able to get like one other extra extender in our hand, maybe like a Gallus or something, um, anything of that nature, probably would be able to pull off the double Dante uh, with maybe uh, Bardiche and a um, you know the Fog Blades with the Fire Lake that we have here. 
which is really good. So not only do we have a negation, but we can blow up three cards during their turn, which is really, really good to have. Um, and of course, uh, this card again, uh, it's a little unfortunate that we drew it here. Uh, we have two targets in the grave, but we can't summon this quite yet. Uh, but I think we'll be uh, fine for a turn, to say the least, because we do have Fire Lake and Fog Blade set going into this. We do have an End Phase Skarm Search, uh, which we'll grab Tour Guide, of course. Uh, not going to really grab anything else. And uh, yeah, that pretty much sums up that turn right there. Could have been much better. We could have like banished this for uh, another copy of Boots, but I'd rather keep that in deck to have a target for Bard each if we decide to go into it later on. So that's it for that hand. Now we will uh, go ahead and do another one. All right, so we're all shuffled up here. Let's go ahead and get started with our next hand and uh, see what we can pull off this time. Last time it was like uh, Dante. Uh, Cherubini, Graph, Fogblade, and Fire Lake. This time we open up the Dealer, the Wheeler and Dealer with the Tracker, with Rhino Warrior and Skarm in hand. So if we were going against like a board of Thunder Dragons, uh, we have, you know, Wheeler, uh, normaling the Tracker into Wielder, um, and then just popping off from there. But what I want to do here, though, since we don't need to do that, uh, I'd rather save the normal summon, of course, for Rhino Warrior. Um, of course, we could, like, go into Cherubini with these two, and then, like, send Sabres, stack this, mill it that way. Uh, but I'd rather just normal the Rhino Warrior, special summon the Tracker here, and then go right into Cherubini. Uh, this deck has, like, a 100% chance of making Cherubini uh, turn one, which is pretty incredible. Uh, then we'll use uh, Rhino Warrior to send uh, Graph from deck to Grave. Fine, or well, yeah, we're going to send Graph, and then Graph is going to summon his uh, partner in crime, Seer. It's like that. And then we'll summon the Weed Dealer, or the Wheeler and Dealer, whatever the hell you want to call him. The Psychic Wielder. Love this card so much. Then we'll uh, go into a Dante, just like that. And we will detach the... Uh, Seer, milling one, two, three. Both copies of Fire Lake gone, oh well. Uh, now we'll use uh, Seer's Effect to summon the Graph. We haven't used Cherubini here because we used Rhino Warrior to start. So what we'll do now is send the Edgem Saber so we can get the Skarm on the top of our deck and uh, play a little bit more Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, yeah, so let's put that there. We'll stack this, just like that. Summon the Sabers from the Grave. Go into our second Dante. I could grab him here. And let's go ahead and detach the sabers. And we'll mill three more. Usually sometimes I try to mill um, two for the second Dante, but we'll just mill three this time. And we mill a Barbar, a Skarm, like we uh, stacked, and a, another Rhino Warrior. That's not too bad. Uh, see, this time if we had that Block Dragon in hand, we could make it live. No problem. So we have double Dante Cherubini with a set Fog Blade and an End Phase Search coming up and uh, a graph underneath the Dante. So at most, we're getting like an add back or two. I mean, if they spin one, we're still going to get an add back uh, at least off this one and then a special summon. And we're able to protect our Dantes or our Cherubini, I should say, um, via his own effect. And then, of course, our Dantes can't be destroyed by card effects also. So we're safe from cards like Slumber, which is really, really strong. Uh, so yeah, that's it for that hand. We'll go ahead and shuffle up and do another one. Just a real shame we milled both those Fire Lakes. Still really want to try experimenting playing a third Fire Lake and maybe a Traveler. And maybe cutting up the cutting the rank up magic out of the deck. And maybe the Foolish. Uh, just play some more trap cards. Because uh, I, I think Fire Lake is just really strong. I feel, like I, I feel more secure setting up with Fire Lake than I do with the, um, with the Fog Blade. Because I feel like Fog Blade... Um, can be dodged by a lot of things. Uh, the fact that they're monster, I can't attack into it, um, is kind of annoying. The fact that it's a continuous is kind of weird. I mean, going forward, I might cut the Phantom Knight engine completely. I don't know if I want to just do it for just the Fog Blades going forward. I thought originally I might want to do that, but I don't know. We'll see. Uh, so starting off, Tour Guide, Cal Cab, Mathematician, Mathematician, and Seer. That is quite... The opening hand. Uh, Mathematician probably really wants me to start off with normal summoning him, but I don't want to do that. Uh, obviously, I'd rather just start with the tour guide. Tour guide can go for Libic. And I want to go for Libic here so we can get the Seer out of our hand. 
We could also go for a graph, actually, and then graph could just summon Limbic, and we can just play it out from there. So yeah, let's do that. Let's use graph instead and be smart, just like that. And we'll uh, shuffle this up real quick, and then we'll link into Cherubini. Graph activates, we'll summon Libic, just like that, and then we'll special summon this from our hand via his own effect. So this is sometimes, like, I I really like the other, you know, maybe not the most important Burning Abysses, uh, just for this reason, because you just sometimes need another level 3 monster on field. If you don't see cards like Tracker, or Gallus, or Wielder, um, or C Archiver, or uh, Edge of Sabers, um, so sometimes just having an extra BA just to summon out via its own effect is nice. Uh, so we're going to Dante, we're going to detach Libic, we're going to mill 1, 2, and 3. We mill the Cloak, we'll go into Seer off of that uh, Libic summon. And we can banish the Cloak here to add, um, we could add, uh, you know, the, the Boots obviously. Then we probably want to link away these two at this point. For a, a copy of Bardiche, of course, whatever we revive off of. Well, technically, we could revive the Cherubini off of the Seer, so we could do that. Let's just go into the Bardiche. Seer will revive the Cherubini. Why not? So anything we uh, anything else we don't summon doesn't just die immediately. Uh, we'll send Boots, set a Fog, and then we'll banish the Boots for another copy of Fog Blade, just like that. And uh, we didn't mill into any Skarms, which is unfortunate, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, so we'll just set that there. And then we could banish this, per se, to grab another copy of Boots. Uh, so we don't have to worry about drawing into it next turn. Find that card there. There it is. So we have Double Mathematician and a Boots in hand under turn. And um, pretty decent solid field here. Just the Double Negation coming in kind of clutch. And even if we did have a Fog Blade, it's still live because of the Cherubini and the Dante on board. So pretty solid ending field there, as I would say. It's um, not always ending on like a ton of negates. Most of your interruptions come from your traps, obviously. Uh, but, like It's a standard solid setup field that your opponent's going to have to go through. And uh, in, in most cases, have no other option than to give you an effect or two in the process. And the next turn, uh, you can just go full aggro instead of trying to wall up and uh, try to put on damage per game, you know, like via Boral Sword and things of that nature, which comes up a lot because instead of trying to like make your your double Dante with Cherubini, um, you know, like if you're going second, you're gonna make just Dante and Boral Sword with like uh, the two materials you would use to make the second Dante with your Cherubini. You can't obviously make Boral Sword with uh, Bardiche, so Cherubini works just as good. Now, uh, to kind of throw it back to that one turn where we milled both of our uh, Fire Lakes, I was thinking about playing a Link Monster, just a generic Link Monster, to be able to link away a Dante perhaps with any other extra BA, uh, so we can keep the 2 BA card on field for Fire Lake. So for this next hand, let's see what we can draw into. Um, Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll end on a, a Fire Lake play here, I don't know. Uh, Libic, Tracker, there's Fire Lake, speak of the devil. Um, and uh, yeah, Mathematician, Tracker, Libic, and Farfa with Fire Lake, so that's pretty nice. Like I said earlier, probably a card, a Link I'd probably play, maybe is like Underclock Taker. Um, that's like one of the ones that only come to mind, or Land Parinkus, but I feel like Underclock Taker just might be better. Uh, just because it actually has an effect. Um, Land Frankus doesn't. I mean, it has a little more attack than another Clock Taker, but they're both kind of run of the mill, I guess. Uh, so we'll start with Mathematician, and we will send uh, Edgem Sabers. The reason why I want to send Edgem Sabers is because uh, this is just a one Mathematician, is a one card Cherubini, which is nice. Uh, so yeah, we'll do this. Edgem Sabers returns the Libic back to the deck. We'll link these two away. Uh, and we'll go right into Cherubini, and this is a case where like if we open the take time board for the speed rate engine We could just go mathematician send this and then return the take time tour uh, take time board back to the deck uh, Via sabers and then we're gonna use Cherubini here to do an another effect uh, Which is going to basically remove uh, That take time board from the top of the deck essentially giving us another shot uh, later in the game to recycle the uh, the whole speed ride engine essentially you have another chance at drawing the terror top first, um, or at least just drawing you know this card's in a better optimal position. So yeah, sending Rhino Warrior off the Cherubini, then Rhino Warrior sending Graph, Graph summoning Seer. Now we'll special summon the Psychic Tracker. 
uh, because we control another level 3, and this can't be destroyed by Cardifact because of Cherubini. We'll go into the Traveler, and then we will mill 3, milling Libic, uh, Terror Top, and Skarm. Really solid mills there. Uh, so, we could do one of two things. Uh, we could just use the Libic effect, or no, just using the Seer effect to revive Graph. And then pitch the Farfa to make Beatrice. That way we can end on a live Fire Lake with Beatrice. Or we can end on Double Dante Fire Lake. Uh, with, yeah, Double Dante Fire Lake with a, you know, no cards left in hand. Essentially because we'd have to summon this off of the Libic. Uh, since we haven't done it yet, we'll just do the uh, Beatrice play. Just to spice things up a little bit. So Seer will activate, summoning Graph. We'll summon that right there. We won't activate Libic in this case. Again, you could, depending on whatever situation you find yourself in. Uh, just keeping this in hand to be able to Ixies into the uh, Beatrice. And then we'll do that. We'll discard it. We won't use the effect of uh, Farfa here, obviously. So putting that there. Fire Lake is still live because we do have two Burning Abyss monsters. And end phase, we will search the TGU. Pretty solid end war there. Um, an interruption, an interruption, and a really solid card to start off our next turn. Uh, so yeah, solid ending there. Uh, we'll go ahead and shuffle it up, and we'll go ahead and do, uh, one more test hand. Uh, so far everything's playing out pretty well and consistent. Alright, so everything's all shuffled once again. We'll draw into another five cards. The Take Tom Dorg, the Barbar, the Fire Lake, the Alec, and the Block Dragon. Um, so this is a pretty rough hand, I would say. Um, the Black Dragon, in theory, was a decent idea, but I think going forward, I might cut this card. Um, even playing it at three, I'm not sure, uh, how that would go. That would just be weird. So, we'll just, uh, normal summon the Alex special, the Barbar, -bar, and then we will link into Cherubini. Actually, we need to special summon both of these. There's no need to, to use their normal summons here. Uh, so we'll just special both, and then we'll use Cherubini to send uh, the, where is it, uh, Rhino Warrior here, and then we will send Graph. So either way, like, with a really brick hand like that, we're still going to make this Fire Lake live if it's the last thing that I do. Uh, so we'll summon out Seer, we'll normal summon the Take Tom Borg. Uh, see, coming in clutch, Take Tom Borg. Never underestimate the little take Tom Borg. Hey, if we mill some Earths here, we can make this block dragon live and we can just party. Uh, so yeah, let's overlay these two. Uh, again, Cherubini protecting Seer from being uh, dead. We will most certainly mill one, two, and three. Oh my lord. Did we just mill two Earth monsters? Uh, Seer activating, summoning the Graph. And then we will use, uh, well, we don't have anything else to use, but we'll summon Block Dragon now uh, in defense, because why the hell not just wall up some more? Banishing the Wielder, the Dealer, and the Rhino Warrior, and the Mathematician. So those are banished. And End Phase Search of Skarm uh, will grab us the Tour Guide, right? As always, grabbing that TGU End Phase, setting that Fire Lake. Uh, with plenty of targets on field to activate. And if this block dragon dies, uh, we could basically add another copy uh, uh, from our deck to our hand, which is something I might consider playing more of going forward. Um, this is a better card more so for going second, because it's just additional damage and link fodder. Uh, and then, like I said, if it dies, you can add up to three earth monsters from your hand, uh, or from your... Um, if sent from the field of the graveyard, you can uh, add up to three rock-type monsters from your deck. Uh, whose total level is equal 8, uh, so you can just add another copy of Block Dragon. I would play more, but like IRL only have one of these right now, um, so I'm just going to play it. And ideally, like I said, this would be just a, a more optimal going second card. I wanted to summon here just for going first. Not that it like adds a ton to our going first board. Um, I guess we could just link these away for a boar load turn one, I guess. Um, that's something you could do in theory. Yeah, I said that was going to be the last one, but uh, I'm kind of having fun with this, so let's just go ahead and do one more test hand. Uh, that was like a really um, not the best hand, and we stay able to get uh, Cherubini, Dante, one extra BA, and a Fire Leg uh, set, which is just incredible. I think just Fire Leg is just such a strong card. I've said it so many times, but I feel like it just gets underestimated. And like I get that Fog Blade's really good, but Fire Lake is also 
really good. Like, just being able to blow up three cards in the middle of their turn is just... I don't see what deck that's really, really terrible against. I mean, maybe going into an already established Thunder Dragon field. But then again, like, you're already in a bad position going against that. Not really, because, like, you can just make Bryonic so easy in this deck with Wielder, um, you know, and any other level three. One reason I was thinking about maybe playing one Rubik in this deck, just to be able to um, summon it off of something if I really need uh, to go into a, uh, you know, Bryo. I want to have the option to be able to, like, send Rhino Warrior, send Graph, summon Rubik, and be able to play out of one of those really nasty boards. Uh, so I think going forward, I might make that change in the main deck. Uh, we draw Block Dragon again. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take the bait here. Uh, we'll Special Summon Gallus, and we'll mill the Alec. That's cool. Now we will Special Summon the uh, Scalcab. We won't use our normal summon. And we'll go into the Cherubini. Now we will use... The effect of Cherubini to send Rhino Warrior, again, the usual suspect here to uh, be sending off Cherubini. We don't have any other extender cards. Uh, we already have Graph in hand, so we could just send... Actually, no, instead of sending Rhino Warrior, let's send the best pair of scissors in existence, and then normal summon Graph, and then use Sabers uh, to put the Block Dragon uh, back on top of the deck because block dragon you can go to the graveyard now we got you got your you got your glory last hand we'll just put you into the graveyard this turn let's go ahead and stack that back to our deck and make a Dante just like that drawing the fire like a ton tonight which is pretty cool going block dragon uh, the cloak and the farfa okay so not too bad um, probably one of the least productive uh, hands I would say I mean not entirely we can go for a summon off of the off of the uh, actually no this is actually really good because we can use uh, seer here or a graph rather to summon out seer and then we can link the uh, cherubini and the seer away for that this brings this back it won't die so that keeps our fire lake alive and then we can send a copy of uh, where is it? You know what? To be honest, we could probably send... Um, no, I don't think we can do it. Never mind. I'll just ignore what I was about to even even say there. Uh, so we'll send the uh, boots to set that, and then we'll banish the boots to set uh, another fog blade. I wish we could set Fire Lake, but we'll just set Fog Blade instead. So here we end with Dante, Cherubini, Bardiche, and a double fog blade with Fire Lake set. Which is pretty nice, if you ask me. We weren't able to mill into a Skarm there. Um, one thing I was trying to think of doing there was to see if there was a way uh, to be able to, um, some way, send a Fog Blade. Does he have to send? It says one Phantom Knight monster from your deck to the grave. Okay, so you can't even send Fog Blade, which isn't too big of a deal. Um, but if we were able to, like, get a way to get Fog Blade engraved to summon this out and then, like, search one of these. Um, to be able to make another rank three, another Dante, you know, two Dante Cherubini, uh, Rusty Bard each with Fog Blades and Fire Lake set would be really bonkers, but this would do, in my opinion, two negations of Field Wipe, uh, an Add Back, uh, Recurring Sabers, like just so much good stuff going on here, um, and a pretty decent graveyard, Sabers and Grave, and we're drawing Hydralander for turn which would be live we would have a live hydralander to summon out onto the field so that's pretty cool and of course an add back from dante if they decide to get rid of it um and if they go into unicorn or something we can just negate it obviously uh and any other plays they try to make just just explode the field uh with the fire lake so yeah i think that's gonna do it for this test and video i think you guys get the point um hope you guys are enjoying um the Burning Abyss stuff, I am. Uh, I really like this build going forward. Uh, like I said, if you want any, uh, ask me any questions uh, in detail, uh, ask in Discord. Uh, if you haven't joined the Discord, you can do so down in the uh, description below. The link for the Discord server is below. Um, and you can follow me on Twitch to see me test this deck live also. So, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to check out Imperium Duelist as always. And those guys, when to kill, sign out. We'll see you in the next one.